Have you ever met a cannibal? Are you intrigued by mummies? Do you appreciate vigilante justice? These may sound like insane questions, but they're our way of introducing you to these incredible tales on this episode of Fact or Fiction. The line that divides the factual from the unreal has long since blurred. The tales we once thought fantastical, now implanted as truth. To decipher verity from the imagined, you must break from the ordinary and consider a universe where the outlandish prevails. Can you expand your mind to see beyond our perceived reality? Can you decide what's fact or fiction? Cannibalism isn't a new concept, but it's not something you hear about very often in our modern age. Juan Porto had never eaten human flesh before, but after an accident left him shy an appendage, a morbid curiosity overtook him and several of his friends. Juan Porto knew his life would be different the second his motorcycle was hit by an oncoming car. Even as he waited for his body to hit the ground, he didn't expect to survive the accident. So when he wound up in the hospital with doctors telling him he was going to lose his leg, he kept things in perspective and reminded himself how much more awful things could be. Though phased by the idea of losing his leg, a curiosity overcame him, one that led him to ask the doctor if he could keep the amputated appendage. With no laws preventing him from doing so, the doctor signed off on it and handed over the severed leg, unaware of Juan's ultimate plan for it. Thinking back to his two-legged days, Juan recalled a conversation he had had with several of his friends, one that led to the question of, would you eat human meat? Now, with leg and freezer, he would finally make everybody that said yes prove just how serious they were. Cutting a slice of meat off the shin and cremating the rest, Juan contacted a friend whose boyfriend, Dave, was a chef. It took him a few days, but Dave ultimately agreed, as did 10 of Juan's closest friends. The group gathered around the table prepared to check off a box on their bucket list and dine on their first tasting of human flesh. Dave prepared the shin meat as he would any taco dish, seasoning the human beef and sauteing it with peppers. Not to Dave's fault at all, the meat was chewy, but Juan found the flavor more than tolerable, sort of like buffalo, fatty and a little gamey. One friend spat it out, more disgusted by the thought of dining on his friend than the taste of the food. Though none of the group would go on through life with a taste for human meat, it was an experience that brought them closer together, and all it cost was one leg. How's your stomach after that one? A little queasy? Too nauseated, say, to start dissecting it to pinpoint moments that seem too crazy to be real? Why well, you let us know what you think in the comments section and by voting on the on-screen poll. Let's move on to the strange find after the death of Franklin Peddington. Late old Frankie wasn't a peculiar man, at least not that anyone took notice of, but after his death, a secret emerged that may have painted the British man in a very different light. Franklin Frankie Peddington wasn't what you'd call the friendly neighbor. He wasn't nasty. In fact, so few knew so little about him. After his death in 2017, it's possible that cleaners happened upon the cause for his solitude. Frankie lived alone, occasionally stepping outside to grab the mail or scare off the neighborhood stray. But he never went out of his way to speak to anybody. Those that waved at him received a wave in return, but it very rarely went beyond that. When he passed away in July 2017, leaving behind a house to no heirs, 
The locals that knew of him were curious what would be found in his abode. They were not disappointed. While cleaning his home and preparing it for a bank sale, members of a cleaning company dug up an awful truth about Frankie. Amidst his collection of stuff was a dead body, so old that it had become mummified by time. The body was found nearly a year after Frankie's death, but it had been dead for far longer. Police investigating the scene were initially perplexed as to a cause and identity, but further investigation led to the corpse being identified as Sheldon Roberts, a man known by the local authorities as being a bit of a troublemaker. What happened between Peddington and Roberts was never determined, though Roberts' body was found to have multiple injuries. The mystery of the Peddington and Roberts case lingers in the small British town of Whitby, with neighbors of Peddington still asking themselves what kind of man he was. For who knows how long he lived with a decomposing body, one that likely deserved better than it got. The Loner with a Secret isn't a narrative that's too absurd to believe, but does that mean that you should believe this one? We'll leave you to think it over as we move on from Frankie to a vigilante with a thirst for revenge against the worst kind of person, a man that did horrifying things to horrific people. Does anyone ever deserve to be put to death? It's certainly a moral debate for the ages, but it's also a question that frames the story of a Wisconsin man that became the center of a horrific scene. 50-year-old Donald Harmon was taken into custody after being accused of setting ablaze a group of people accused of being pedophiles. A quiet man otherwise, Harmon had apparently grown tired of the rash of sexual assaulters that had popped up in his city an internet search for the names in his area brought up a long list of people, people he could have sworn he crossed paths with at some time in his life before. He felt an anger building inside of him after reading the words sexual abuse of a minor more than a dozen times. Donald didn't have any kids of his own, but he was still compassionate to the plight of being molested as a child. One day, one very bad day, where nothing seemed to be going his way, Donald snapped, and there was one group of people he would be more than happy to take his anger out on. It was a busy couple of nights as Donald went about the hardest part of his plan, rounding up as many of the city's pedophiles that he could find. A mix of chloroform and force was all he needed to strangle the five men he decided to target. They were mousy, especially compared to his larger build, and were easy to restrain in the old abandoned apartment complex. Once he gathered his prey, Donald equipped himself with nothing but a lighter and a can of gasoline, which he gleefully poured onto his protesting lot of criminals. The more he poured, the more they screamed, and the more he grew delighted. He didn't remember lighting the match, but when police grabbed him for the murder of five people, he knew what he had done. He wasn't ashamed of what he did. In fact, as he was being hauled away, he couldn't stop proclaiming his desire to burn all of the child molesters and give them the only fate they deserved. Pedophiles are low on the totem pole in the prison system. So is it so crazy to think someone on the outside would get revenge for the children whose innocence they took? You're probably dying to know where we've led you astray and where we've been truthful. And lucky for you, we're at the point we've all been waiting for, the reveal. Are you ready to find out if you can decipher between fact or fiction? Let's look back at tonight's three stories and find out which were born from reality and which were fabrications of the imagination. For our first story, we dined on an anecdote about casual cannibalism. Do you think this was too gruesome to have happened in real life? Reddit user Incredibly Shiny Shard would tell you differently as he shared the experience, pictures and all, in a Reddit thread. 
After losing his foot in a motorcycle accident, Shiny propositioned 11 friends to dine on his appendage. Only one said no. We moved on from amputated limbs to mummified bodies with the story of Franklin Peddington. Do you believe the Whitby loner lived with a dead corpse for an undetermined amount of time? If not, then we'd love to take you back to July of 2017 in Sydney, Australia. After the death of recluse Bruce Roberts, the body of Shane John Snellman was found in his home, so badly decomposed to the point of being mummified. Nobody ever discovered what happened between the two and why Roberts just let Snellman's body rot in his home. Finally, we have Donald Harmon, a man whose bad day turned into a man with a bloodlust. Do you think somebody would be capable of the act Harmon was accused of? While this story was actually a work of fiction, the inspiration for it came from a real piece involving a man named Jorge Porto Sierra from Kissimmee, Florida. In March 2018, Porto Sierra was arrested for the attempted murder of two people he claimed were sex offenders. Before he could set them ablaze, his targets escaped and he was arrested. How well did you do in tonight's video? Did you look past the deception of our world and define the off-blurred line that struggles to separate lies from the truth? Let us know in the comment section below. And should you find the urge to test your perceptions again, be sure to subscribe and join us next time when we ask you to decide what's fact or fiction.